and all, but I did a 35 day sanction in segregation. Um, no visits, no commentary, no nothing. I was in the hole for that alleged incident. Okay. Describe Case number 2020 CR 387. Ms. Fry appears from the uh, court security Zoom location at the Butler County Judicial Center. James Watts appears as defense counsel. Uh, Devin Canfield appears on behalf of the Butler County Attorney's Office. I'll also note the presence of Christy Ashenfelter, the ISO from Community Corrections. This matter comes before the court at this time for further hearing in regards to the warrant to show cause. Various allegations, failing to notify her ISO prior to changing residence, failing to obtain suitable employment, submitting a urine sample on October 16th, positive for fentanyl on October 23rd, admitted use of fentanyl while at the Butler County Jail back in August of 23. And then on November 3 of 2023, defendant submitted a urine sample that did not meet the temperature requirements. All submitted by Ms. Ashenfelter on behalf of the Community Corrections Department. Mr. Watts, what are your client's intentions regarding these allegations? Well, Your Honor, um, as Your Honor may know, uh, my client has provided a fairly large packet of documents that um, she believes speak to this case. It is my understanding she does not stipulate. She does not agree that she's in violation of probation. Um, I've sent a message to Mr. Canfield uh, as to exactly what the state's position would be on a, on a disposition of this, should he willing to stipulate. I've not got an answer yet. I think he kind of got roped into this a few minutes ago. But uh, it. All that being said, it appears that at this point, her position is she was not willing to stipulate and would ask for a hearing. All right, very well. Is there anything that you wish to state at this point, Mr. Canfield? Your Honor, as Mr. Watts said, and the court is probably aware, I was not aware of this case until just a few minutes before joining. I have not been able to speak with Mr. Sweeney about this case. If there is no stipulation, I am not prepared to go forward and would ask for a continuance. Um, I also am not aware of what Mr. Sweeney's recommendations would be, and this is my first time seeing this case. So at this time, Your Honor, I believe the state would be requesting a continuance. Position on the continuance, Mr. Watts? Judge, I understand the position Mr. Canfield's in. Um, my clients come to El Dorado at court security as the court required her to do so. Uh, she has provided some factual documentation that she believes supports her position. But as always, uh, uh, probation revocation matters, the boundaries of the standard here is fairly low and she is at significant risk. Um, I don't know that we, I asked my client, do you have a position on whether we want to proceed today or push it to a later date? Um, um, if we need to continue, I want everyone to be fairly prepared for this. I do. State your name, please. Christy Ashenfelter. And what is your position? I'm an intensive supervision officer. Uh, is Janie Fry one of the people that were assigned to you for supervision? Yes. How long have you been supervising her on this case? She was placed on probation November 22nd, 2021. What was her uh, crime of conviction? At least the primary crime? Possession. Possession. According to the, the journal entry, it appears to be possession of an opiate with intent to distribute. Correct. All right. And that would be a level four drug felony, would it not? I believe so, Your Honor. Okay. I noticed that she was placed on probation some time ago. I trust that she has been extended by court order at some point along the way? Yes, Your Honor. She's been extended twice. Okay. And even as of today, she's within a probationary term. Is that correct? Correct. Her probation is supposed to expire April 18th, 2024. All right. Uh, according to allegation number one, you say that she failed to notify her ISO prior to changing residence. Can you explain 
uh, more about what happened with that? Yes, Your Honor. She was residing in a sober living house called Hemingway Unchained. Um, she was given the ultimatum to be put on a behavior contract. Um, from what I was told, she was she refused to do that, and so she was evicted at the beginning of November, and she failed to notify me when she was moved, when she moved out. Okay. And when did you find out that she had been evicted from this facility? The Silver Living House called me the following Monday. She was evicted on a Saturday. Um, she didn't tell me until, if I can get you the exact date, I can do that. She told me on the 8th of November. Okay. And it, one of her requirements is, is to keep you uh, constantly advised of her actual residence. Yes. All right. Uh, number two, uh, you allege she failed to obtain suitable employment. Your explanation of that alleged offense? Yes, Your Honor. Um, she was working at Boot Barn in Wichita. Um, that is suitable employment, um, but you have to maintain that employment. She was relieved of her duties and did not notify me. And, and when did you find out that she was no longer working there? Um, her start date was October 30th. And her last date was November 10th. And that was the same day that Boot Barn notified me. All right. So you found out from the employer rather than, than the employee defendant. Correct. All right. Number three, you allege on October 16, 2023, the defendant submitted a urine sample positive for fentanyl with higher ground. I'm not sure what much I could add to that, Your Honor. How did you know that she had submitted this urine sample? Higher ground sent it to me. Okay. And higher ground, it was a, some sort of treatment facility that she was engaged with at that time? Yes, it's an outpatient pro provider. I see. Number four alleges on October 23rd of 23, one week later, the defendant admitted to using fentanyl while in the Butler County Jail back on August 18 of 2023. How did that admission come about? I was advised of some information from the Butler County Jail that included Ms. Fry. Um, I brought it up to her and she admitted that she did use and relapse while she was in jail. Begging the question how she'd have access to fentanyl in the jail. Uh, there was an individual who brought in fentanyl to the jail. A woman is behind bars accused of trying to smuggle drugs into the Butler County Jail. The sheriff's office says it worked with an undercover drug task force to make that arrest, which happened Sunday. The woman was arrested after authorities say she tried to drop off denture adhesive that actually contained drugs. The woman is being held on a felony charge of illegal conveyance of drugs. Butler County Sheriff Richard Jones saying, quote, if you try to smuggle drugs into our jail, we will have a cell ready for you, end quote. All right. And then number five, on November 3rd of 2023, you allege that she submitted a urine sample that did not meet the temperature requirements. Can you explain? Yes. <laughs> our UAs that we provide in the office have a temperature gauge on the cups where the urine directly goes into the cup. It did not meet the temperature gauge. So that would tell me that it was not her urine. Okay. How does the community corrections department look at such a urine sample being given as a proposed test for drugs? Well, you're essentially altering a UA, so it's it's a violation in our office. All right. Very well. Mr. Watts, do you have questions for Ms. Ashenfelder? I do, Your Honor. Thank you. I'll just take these one at a time. As my understanding, Ms. Ashenfelder, is the requirement is that she report to you prior to changing residence or employment. Is that correct? Yes. And as a general rule, when someone moves, they know they're going to have to move. They kind of plan it. Sometimes it's short, sometimes long, but you you generally know you're going to move. Fair? For the most part, yes. 
for the most part. Okay. In this case, um, she had uh, no choice as to whether or not she would move, did she? She did have a choice. She did. Uh, may I, Your Honor, may I do a screen share? You may, if it's relevant to the questions you're asking. It is, Your Honor, I believe. I can figure out how. I had it a moment ago. How do I do that? The share screen down at the bottom that's there green. Okay. I'm showing a Sunflower House, a series of text messages. Do you see those? Yes. Okay. And I'm going to scroll forward a little bit. And you're familiar with how text messages work. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And starting scrolling back a little bit, I have a start date of November 4. Is that the date that she was uh, out of Sunflower House? Yes. Okay. Now, if I scroll forward, it appears, and again, it appears, and I can get some testimony from Ms. Fry to uh, uh, lay foundation for this in a moment if we need to. Would you agree this appears to be a string of text messages involving Sunflower House? Yes. Okay. Have you seen the string of text messages before? No. Okay. I'm going to scroll forward to this page. Do you see? It says Mandy Sunflower House at 6.38 a.m. at the top? Yes. Okay. And this appears to be a group of text messages from uh, Ms. Fry to, and I don't know the name of the person at Sunflower House, but someone at Sunflower House. Would that be fair? I would suppose so. Okay. Um, and your honor, I would just like to say, I apologize. I was speaking with someone in my office when this was first shared. I would object to hearsay evidence, but as it is untimely, I understand, um, if the court would overrule that objection. Well, it does appear to be out of court statements made by someone other than someone present on this meeting, Mr. Watts. Uh, it does, Your Honor, and I guess the state can that the state didn't bother to subpoena, nor did I have any ability to subpoena the uh, Sunflower House director to lay the foundation for it. I can call Ms. Fry herself to lay foundation for the document before us. I'll overrule the objection at this time. I'll, I'll allow this to go on. Okay. Now, the reason I ask all this is the. Uh, Text message from the Sunflower House person, I, and again, I don't know who this person is, indicates that she has basically an hour to leave the property, doesn't it? It appears so. Okay. So, and in fact, when you scroll through the messages, and I'll scroll back a bit. Would it appear or seem to appear that Ms. Fry uh, uh, did not want to leave the Sunflower House? She was objecting to the eviction? I would suppose so. The information that I was given was that she was going to be put on a behavior contract and she didn't want to be put on a behavior contract, and that is why she was evicted. So all of this I've never seen. Okay. Well, we'll take it up with Ms. Fry here in a moment. Um, would there be any way for her to to tell you in advance if she's given an hour to get out of the house? Um, it would take a minute or so to leave me a voicemail. Well, because at this point... She has to leave literally now, as they put it here, 59 minutes to leave the property. Did uh, Ms. Fry tell you um, at her next meeting with you that she had to move? I believe she told me on the 8th of November. And on the 8th of November, was that your next 
meeting with Ms. Fry? I believe so. I'd have to look. Okay. Yes, it was. So it was factually uh, near impossible to tell you prior to moving that she moved out of the house. And she did tell you at her first opportunity, didn't she? Well, the reason that she had told me that she moved out is because she didn't want to be put on the behavior contract. Um, what I'm trying to get at is that she could have called me on Monday to let me know okay. because from Monday until the 8th when she let me know at her appointment um i didn't know where she was residing and she is also a registered offender okay uh your honor asked to strike as non-responsive uh that's not the question i asked ma'am re-ask the question mr watts and would Ms. She have, Belter, answer it narrowly would she have any ability to to tell you prior to being evicted literally now no and her next appointment with you, she did in fact tell you. Yes. Okay. Now, I know the second one has failed to maintain suitable employment and you indicate employment at Boot Barn, is that correct? Yes. Okay. And you acknowledge that she was in fact working at Boot Barn, correct? For a period of time, yes. Okay. Well, as far as you know, when did she start there? Uh, Boot Barn told me that she started October 30th. Okay. And you indicated that her last day was when? November 10th. November 10th. You sought, you filed this motion to revoke on November 8th, correct? Yes. Okay. And as of November 8th, she would have been working at Boot Barn, wouldn't she? By your own testimony. Yes, it appears I made a mistake on that one. Okay. So at least, in fact, at least at the time of this uh, uh, revocation request, she in fact did have suitable employment, didn't she? Yes, at that time. Okay. Now, third, you spoke of a urine sample positive for fentanyl while at higher ground. Correct? Yes. And I'm scrolling through the screen sharing. I don't want to, if I could, share that. I think I'm going the wrong way here. That UA, here we go. I'm going to show you what is now page 10 of 49 on the shared screen. Do you see that? Yes. Okay. And this is a clinical reference laboratory uh, report of a urine sample, correct? Yes. Is this the urine sample you're speaking of? Yes. Okay. Um, did you also receive with that the letter from higher ground? Yes, um, I have nothing further. Okay. And the letter from higher ground speaks specifically to the positive UA on October 16, does it not? It appears so. Okay. And that letter from higher ground speaks specifically that the positive of fentanyl on the 16th is a byproduct of previous fentanyl use broken down, but does not suggest new use, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. uh, that's what's written in the report report. Okay. So the UA tests for uh fentanyl, but it doesn't really test for fentanyl. What they found, in fact, was a metabolite for fentanyl being broken down, correct? Yes. Okay. And more important that that breakdown does not suggest that she was using fentanyl at that point. Correct? Objection. I think that calls for speculation. Objection it calls for reading the is that what the letter, let me ask this, is that what the letter 
reflects from higher ground. Yes, that's what she put in the in the letter. Okay. And, and let the record reflect that Brett Sweeney has re relieved Mr. Canfield. As and, and Ron, uh, I, I apologize. This uh, case had uh, skipped my schedule. I'd already gone home and, and I came back. So I apologize uh, for the dress and, and the, the lateness here. Um, Very well. Let us proceed. Um, that letter from higher ground, um, in fact, speaks of a second UA that, uh, let me see if I can find it here. That she did, she passed, does it not? Let's see if I can find it here. It mentions one on uh, November 2nd. Yes, on November 2nd. And finally, you're not familiar with the what happened in the Butler County Jail other than reports from the Butler County Jail, correct? I'm familiar with what I received from the Butler County Jail as well as what Ms. Fry told me. Okay. Um, let's move to number five here. Um, defendant submitted a urine sample did not meet temperature requirements. How is a urine sample taken? Uh, we place a hat into the toilet. The urine goes into the, the hat. The urine's then transplaced into the UA cup and then okay. tested. Okay, now please understand, I've never done this, so I don't know, what is a hat? It's just a medical grade hat that goes in the toilet. Okay, that, that doesn't help me very much. What are we talking about here? It looks like a hat, but it's upside down. You put it in the toilet. Okay, so there's a container that catches the urine yes. rather than going into the bowl. Okay, is that uh, UA observed? Yes, they all are. So someone stands in the room with you as you urinate? Yes. Correct? Okay. And that urine is then poured from that device, the hat, into a cup and sent off for testing. Correct? Yes. The, the main okay. point of the hat is to keep your hands from going down to hold the urine cup. Well, I understand why it's there. Um, were you the person that observed that? Yes. Okay. Was there anything unusual about the collecting of the urine? Yes. Um, Other she... than temperature? No. You didn't appear to be squeezing anything or any odd tubes or anything like that? Well, in that regard, she had put her hand into the toilet right as she sat down. Okay. But that's before the hat's put in or after? After the hat is in there before, she, before you even sit. Okay. So, so she put her hand into the toilet before she sat down, after the hat was in place? I'm sorry, I'm misspeaking. So before she sat down, she pulled down her pants and put her hand up into her cabinal area before she sat down, like right as she was sitting down. Okay. So her hand went up. Near her crotch? Yes. Okay. Um, did it stay there? Did it? Did she take it away? It was there for a couple seconds and she pulled it right back out. Okay. Is that, this, sound, this is going to sound crazy, but that, is that particularly unusual? Uh, yeah. I don't really know who needs to do that as a female to go to the bathroom. Okay. Um, okay. So, the urine sample that is then sent off, did you send off that urine sample? No, we did not. There was no temperature on it. Okay. So, you don't know what was in that urine sample, if anything. I didn't write down anything. Um, I didn't go forward with the test if it doesn't meet the temperature requirements. Okay. If a person doesn't meet the temp, I, I, again, I've never done this, so I'm acting kind of a little out of ignorance here. 
the urine is observed, a person's urinating, it, it's observed, correct? Yes. Okay. They're observed, I presume, as they go in and as they go out as well? Yes. Okay. I also presume there's a temperature taken um, immediately after the urine is, is uh, passed. So the urine immediately when they get done going to the bathroom, it goes directly into the cup. Okay. So, so they come, it gets poured out of the hat into a cup, right? Yes. yes. Temperature is taken at that point, right? Yes. It's taken immediately. Okay. So you would know immediately whether or not it met the temperature requirements. Yes. Within a minute or so, I presume. Well before a minute. Okay. And I also presume that Ms. Fry is present um, as you take that temperature. Yes. Okay. Did you tell her that it failed temperature requirements? I did. Okay. What'd she tell you? She said that it was her urine. Okay. Uh, did you conduct any sort of search of her person to see if there was something that could have passed the urine? No. Did you ask her if she could do that? I did not ask the searcher, no. Why not? Seems an obvious question. Well, normally um, when clients are bringing in urine, it comes in a baggie and they pop the baggie. So once that urine drops, there's nothing remaining inside. Okay. I have to ask, and again, I don't know. I've never done this. I, I'm completely unfamiliar with this. Pops the baggie. Where is the baggie? In the, um, in the vagina of the client. Okay. And that's obviously, that's not a search you're going to want to do. And I get that. Okay. I don't think I have any other questions. Thank you. All right, Mr. Sweeney, do you have any questions on behalf of the state? Um, just I will tell you, because I don't think you were present, that the court conducted an initial examination just to allow the witness the opportunity to provide testimony regarding each of the five points on the motion. So uh, you may proceed with any additional questions you might have. Thank you. And it, and your honor, it's going to be just a few questions um, related to what I've heard. But Ms. Ashenfelter, <clears throat> can you tell me what Ms. Fry told you regarding drug usage inside the Butler County Jail? Yes, if you give me just one second to find my notes on it. Yes. She had notified me, um, we were discussing the issues that were going on with her out at the jail. Um, she admitted that she had a lapse in judgment and that she made a bad call and that she had used some fentanyl when she was out at the jail. And that was simply the gist of the conversation. Okay. Um, and so in your experience um, as a probation officer, it um, sounds like you've uh, been an officer uh, quite some time. Have you seen um, individuals take in urine that's not their own um, and try to present it uh, at a UA as their own? Yes, it appears clients have been doing that a lot more here recently. So you currently had kind of a rash of, of incidents of this sort of thing? Yes, with multiple clients. Okay. Um, and the the thought is then, of course, that the urine has been transported from somewhere else. Yes. Okay. Um, what is Ms. Fry's current status um, as far as treatment goes? 
Uh, that I do not know. Um, the last time that she reported to me in person for an office visit was November 22nd, and then December 13th, that was the date that she was arrested on her warrants. Um, she was to report on the 27th of this week for an office visit, and she didn't show. Okay. Um, Your Honor, I don't know that I have any further questions beyond that. Very well. Court has no additional questions. Um, does the state intend to present any further witnesses beyond Ms. Ashenfelter? No, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Watts, do you intend to present evidence at this hearing? I do, Your Honor. would call Ms. Fry. Ms. Fry? Yes, Your Honor. I trust you wish to testify in this matter because you could remain silent here. I do. All right. Raise your right hand, please. Right hand. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you do solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give in the matter now in hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. So help me God, Your Honor. Very well. Mr. Watts, you may question the witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Fry, as an initial matter, I want to uh, go through the documents that I've been showing the court and counsel and Ms. Ashenfelder. Do you have those? Can you see those on the screen as well? Yes, sir, I can. And you're familiar with a packet of documents, is that correct? Yes, yes, sir, and I am. You brought that packet of documents into my office. I then forwarded them to the court and counsel. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor, or yes, sir. <laughs> uh, not there, at least not yet. Um, and I know you can't scroll through it, but does this appear to be from that packet of documents? Yes, sir, it does. Okay. Now, I'm going to scroll to the document that looks like the 12th page of 49 on that packet of documents. Are you familiar with that? Yes, I am. Okay. What is it? Uh, that looks like um, the one I'm seeing on the screen is a text message from me and the um, owner that runs the Sunflower House, Mandy. Okay. So just so we're clear, Mandy, when it says Mandy Sunflower House at the top of the screen, is that the person that you're receiving the text message from? Yes, sir, it is. Okay. And the messages that have a little bubble on the right side as we look at them, are those yours outgoing or those incoming? The, the one uh, that is from me, that is outgoing to Mandy. Okay, so the statement here, I never took fake pee or got high. I passed the UA and used a hat. That's you to Mandy, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay, and so we're clear, the messages that are on the left side are from Mandy to you, correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay, and so we're clear, and I, I probably asked this question, exactly who is Mandy? Uh, Mandy is the supervisor overall of the Sunflower House that I was residing at. And this particular group of text messages um, is really concerning about what was happening at the time. Not in that, no. Um, she was talking about my UA uh, with my probation officer in that message right there. Mm -hmm. As the text, and I'm scrolling on, are these text messages all in a row? Yes, they are. Okay. Nothing's been left out? No. They are Nothing. continuous messages, sir. Has anything been modified or changed? No, sir. Okay. Now, I'm going to scroll on down to a message at 638. Do you see that? Yes, sir, I do. Okay. And over here on the left, it begins, you have 59 minutes to leave the property. Okay. You see that? Yes, sir, I do. What date was that, if you remember? November 4th. Okay. At the time you got that message, was that the first time you knew you were being evicted? Yes, sir, it was. At the moment that that's given to you, um, 
When did you learn that you were being evicted? Uh, the moment that message had came through, that that exact moment, honestly, um, is when I realized that I had to leave the property. Okay. And there's some discussions prior to that about some things that were going on or uh, they accused, for example, the accusation of fake P, which we just spoke of. Yes, Your Honor. She stated my PO had called her and said that I had brought fake urine in um, to my my UA with her that previous day. Okay. Well, while we're on that subject, let's talk about that. Okay. Because the last thing we spoke of, you were present when we had some testimony from Ms. Ashenfelder about the hat. Yes, um, okay. Let's talk about that. Did you use fake urine? No, sir. I did not. Did you use someone else's urine? No, sir. I wouldn't even know how to do that. Okay. Did you insert anything in your vagina to uh, simulate that you were urinating? Absolutely not. Did you provide, did you take anything in there with you um, to provide as a urine sample other than your own body and your own urine? No, sir, I did not. Um, when you went in that day on, it looks like November 3, did you know you were going to be a UAID? No, I did not. Are you typically UAID when you have office visits? It's random. I, I don't know until she tells me that moment I have a UAID. UA. Okay. So some days when you have visits, you know, and some days you don't. Correct. Okay. Approximately how often does that happen? Is it every other one, every third? Uh Honestly, they're they're random, sir. So I could go several visits with no UA, and she, the next time she'll want a UA. Um, that's uh, yeah. They're just they're totally random. They're not in any kind of sync order, every other one or anything like that. They're at her discretion. Okay. So, and the reason I ask that it is fair to say it would be difficult, if not impossible, to essentially plan a fake UA in advance. That fair? Fair, correct. Okay. Um, now, this text message speaks of 59 minutes to leave the property. What did what property, and it also speaks to what you don't take with you today, you have 72 hours to come pick up. What are we talking about there? Because um, when I had moved into the residence, of course, I bring my belongings, clothes, um, bedding, things like that. So she's pretty much stating um, within that 59 minutes, whatever I cannot take with me, um, I have then 72 hours to come pick it up or it will be donated. Okay. Well, what did you have in the... Is um, ground? What is the name of this place? Sunflower House. Sun, Sunflower House. What did you um, have there? I had belongings, clothing, shoes, um, just as essentials, everyday essentials to survive, to live, you know, bedding, some pictures of my kids, um, food, plants, things like that to um, accommodate my bedroom. Okay. Just more than you could take in an armful in any one moment. Absolutely, in the panic I was in, yes. Okay. And I don't have a vehicle, so I had to call and wait for a family member to come and get me. So you don't have any place to load this stuff up into? No. Okay. Um, were you able to get your items out? No, most of them, yes. Okay. Where did you go? Um, I went to my sister's house that was approved by Christy Ashenfelter prior to going to the Sunflower House. How far away is that? Um, within a few miles. Okay, so it's relatively close. Yeah, it is still in Wichita, Kansas, sir. Okay. Um, when did you tell Christy that you had to move out? At our very next meeting, um, that was one of the first things I had brought up to her that I, I left the Hemingway house and 
to the reasons um, why I have left. Okay. You didn't have a choice in the matter. You were required to leave. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now, let's speak about one other thing. Um, you tested positive or acknowledged to using fentanyl while inside the jail. Um, Correct? I, essentially to, wish, yes. Okay. Um, now let's deal with the obvious. Um, is it possible to get drugs inside the jail? Yes. Um, in this particular case, um, what ended up happening inside the jail? Um, well, let, let me ask it this way. What were you in the jail for at the time? I was in jail on a sanction prior to going to treatment. So I had to okay. sit there until my bed date was available for treatment. Okay. So... You were in the jail following a previous revocation, is that correct? Unfortunately, yes. Okay. And serving that sanction? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, when you tested positive in the jail, what was the jail's, um, what was your sanction to the jail, if any? Uh, yeah, um, I didn't necessarily test positive. It was accusations. Um, that I had some possession of fentanyl, but I did a 35 day sanction in segregation. Um, no visits, no commentary, no nothing. I was in the hole for that alleged incident. Okay, describe what that means when you say in the hole. What is uh, that? I was in segregation. I was locked down 27 hours all the day. Um, you don't get any of the amenities. The, you know, the phone, the tablet, your commissary, um, anything like that. You said 27 hours a day. That's that. Calvary sure. I'm right. sorry. 24 hours a day. Okay. I'm nervous and I've, I've been very emotional following this. Um, during that segregation, um, what is your contact with other persons, if any? I had none. So they feed you three times a day. There in your cell? Yes, sir. Do you get any time outside to walk around or make any contact with anybody else? No, um, they do. If they're not on a lockdown or have enough staff, they will allow you an hour out where they transport you to um, a common area where you are monitored and you're allowed to walk up and down. That's it. Okay. In that common area, do you have a chance to speak to anyone or see anyone? Mr. No. What's the relevance of this line of questioning? Judge, I think it goes to uh, a mitigation as to the the uh, consequences. And I, I say that because she has been effectively punished for uh, that possession of fentanyl inside the jail. And I think it's relevant here as to what the consequences were in the jail. All right. And hasn't she already testified as to those consequences? I think she's doing that right now, Your Honor. What would your next question be? Um, how long were you there? And, and Your Honor, I, I would object to, uh, to relevance. Uh, we're trying to establish whether or not there was violations or not. Certainly, uh, any mitigation can be argued um, should there be a, a finding of a violation of probation by both Mr. Watts and his client. All right. Uh, I'll direct the witness to answer that question. How long, how long are you in segregation? Uh, 35 days. I'm sorry? 35 days. Okay. All right. Is there anything else you want to tell the court uh, at this point about uh, the circumstances here? Yeah, um, following the UA with the whole hat thing, uh, that next following week, she did UA me again, same circumstances with the hat. Um, at that time, there were no hands. She washed the urine, come out. And again, um, and I'm not trying to criminate myself, 
but it didn't reach the temp then either. Um, I, when at the first time it happened, I had mentioned possibly that there might be some kind of delay or effect in their temps. Um, and then that had happened again to me. And I just feel like, um, and you know, instead of maybe looking into their cups, uh, it was, how am I doing that? Um, when again, you know, she's watching me, there were no hands down there. Um, it is my urine. Um, and then on when I had did that first UA with her, I had taken a UA with higher ground that previous day. And then I seen Christy. So I, I have no reason to use or try or to take anybody else's urine in but my own. Um, my recovery has been something that I've been very proud of. Um, and I surely wouldn't want to um, deny myself of that, of my progress or my um, accomplishment in that. Mr. Watts? Um, I have nothing further with uh, Ms. Fry, Your Honor. Mr. Sweeney, do you? Maybe just very briefly, Your Honor, just a few questions. Uh, Ms. Fry, uh, Mr. Watts was asking you about the text thread between you and what looks like Mandy from the Sunflower House. Um, have you gone through those text messages? Are you familiar with those? Yes, I am. Okay, so um, it looks like, uh, and not what's visible on the screen right now, but there's a there's a thread in there that talks about some house rules that involves uh, some minimal rent that's to be paid to the Sunflower House. Are you familiar with that? Uh, yeah. type? Yes, I am. Okay, and in there, um, it looks like you told uh, Mandy from the Sunflower House that you didn't agree with those rules um, and that you were just a little bit behind. Um, are you familiar with that? Yeah, I was one day behind on on a little bit of money, yes. Okay. Um, I'm assuming that when you enter into these houses, they make you sign some sort of formal contracts. Um, did you do that in this case? No, I did not. Okay. Um, were you familiar with those rules that you had to pay some, some form of rent? Yeah, I did. And if you look in the message, you'll see in there where the rule she's stating, I that was not in the rule book. Okay. Um, There seems to be, at least from what I can see in the, the text thread, there seems to be some debate about that between you and, and Mandy at the Sunfire House. Would you say that's accurate? Yes. Okay, fair. Um, and then um, it, you stated, uh, you testified to Mr. Watts that you were proud of your recovery. Is that correct? Yes, I am. Yes, sir. Um, but you did. Um, you you also testified that you did use fentanyl inside the jail. Is that is that accurate? I never testified that I did use. I pled not you guilty. In the... I'm sorry. You just you just told Mr. Watts that that on direct, like ten minutes ago. I don't recall him asking if I used in the Butler County Jail. Okay. And if I may, Your Honor, I think the testimony was she agreed that she possessed some fentanyl inside the jail. That was the allegations against me at the Butler County Jail. Okay. Um, I misspoke. It, did you tell Miss Ashenfelter that as well? Um, I felt kind of poor. She had a piece of paper in front of her, and she had stated that if I admitted to her that I did use that, she wouldn't make me do a sanction. However, um, at that time, if there was ever to be a warrant placed, that she would then put it in the warrant. So you're saying that you were coerced by Ms. Ashenfelter, uh, yeah. I guess, to, to sign a document saying that you possess fentanyl in the jail or use fentanyl in the jail? In the fear of a sanction, yes, sir. Yeah. Your Honor, I don't think I have any further questions. Mr. Watts, do you? No, Your Honor, thank you. Very well, the court has no additional questions for the witness. Having heard the testimony provided by Ms. Ashenfelter and Ms. Fry in this case, the court will make the following rulings at this time. Regarding allegation number one, failing to notify the ISO prior to changing residence, the court does not find violation. While this situation could have and should have been handled better with an immediate report to her officer, perhaps even 
uh, in accord with specific direction that was given by the ISO, the court cannot find that under these circumstances that the court should consider that to be a violation given her report to Ms. Ashenfelter at her very first appointment thereafter and the fact that she was apparently evicted rather than voluntarily leaving. Number two, regarding the alleged failure to obtain suitable employment, the officers essentially has conceded that point and that uh, allegation has been essentially withdrawn through testimony. Number three, regarding the defendant submitting a urine sample positive with fentanyl with higher ground, court finds that it was a de minimis level of fentanyl that was found that very well could have been residual from prior use that may have even preceded the uh, last probation review hearing in, in this case. And the court will not consider that to be a violation under the evidentiary circumstances presented here today. Regarding number five, the defendant submitting a urine sample that did not meet the temperature requirements. It does appear to the court that this may have been a technical violation. However, apparently it was not disputed that apparently this happened again a week later and the same thing happened. I don't understand why her body temperature wouldn't be the same as any other human being giving a sample. But under the testimony provided, the court will not find a violation that merits taking further action in regards to her sentence. Leaving number four, court does not find Janie Fry's testimony credible regarding possession of fentanyl without using. It does appear that the uh, evidence has established that the defendant admitted to the use of fentanyl while in, uh, in the Butler County Jail in August of 2022. That is after her last probation review hearing, which certainly leads this court to a conclusion that even after she was severely sanctioned on August the 4th, while she was doing her jail time within the facility, she had access to fentanyl and used it. Even if she just possessed it, she undoubtedly is aware that she cannot possess or use controlled substances. And fentanyl is one of the most dangerous uh, substances that's in use in the streets today. That in and of itself uh, merits a finding that there has been a substantial and material violation of the terms and conditions of community corrections placement in this case. Court will now turn to disposition. Uh, Ms. Ashenfelter, I'll start with you. Having been her supervising officer throughout the pendency uh, of her probation, what is your recommendation to the court? Your Honor, at this point, I am not sure what else community corrections can offer. Ms. Fry, we have tried inpatient, outpatient, now sober living. Um, we've been trying to get through this case for the past couple of years at this point. Um, Probation is just not working for Ms. Fry. Um, she has, she just has difficulty being honest and being upfront about what's going on and what she needs help with. We're here to help address those problems and those issues that are going on in her life. And probation is just not working for her. So I'm Thank recommending you. revocation. Thank you. Mr. Sweeney, on behalf of your office, what is your recommendation to the court? Yes, Your Honors. The state's recommending revocation. Um, I would note in speaking with Ms. Ashenfelter, I believe that Ms. Fry has had uh, DIP sanctions, um, uh, graduated sanctions that would qualify her for revocation. Um, I think the most concerning thing, and the, the court's already touched on this, is that she was in the Butler County Jail um, when uh, she had the, the possession usage uh, of fentanyl. Um, which I guess, first and foremost, um, I find kind of appalling that there's drugs that, especially fentanyl, um, in the Butler County Jail, considering that that's one of the places that we, or at least I do, uh, recommend folks to go when we want to try to dry them out or uh, remove them from uh, usage incidents. So I, I, that's that's concerning. Um, but it it also speaks, I think, to Ms. Fry and uh, how serious this probation is being taken, um, or maybe how strong this uh, addiction is. But it, that's so concerning, um, especially when um, she's in the Butler County Jail, so she's currently serving the consequences um, for it, and then continues uh, to use, and especially fentanyl. 
So uh, given the prior sanctions uh, and the violations as found by the court, um, so it's recommending revocation, um, I, I don't think probation is amenable. Ms. Watts, your recommendation regarding an appropriate disposition? Well, Judge, let me start first with an observation. I'm always amused when I hear uh, the state and, frankly, sometimes the court uh, appalled and shocked that there's drugs inside the jail. Um, frankly, no one should be surprising, remotely surprised there's drugs inside the jail. I would um, agree, Mr. Watts, but I'm also surprised that somebody who's in the trouble like your client was in would use drugs that she had access to within the jail. Well, Isn't that really the issue but, here? Not the availability of the fentanyl, but rather that she took advantage of that opportunity? Well, with respect, Your Honor, and I may have mischaracterized it, what happened and the documents refer it is she was accused of possessing that controlled substance. The jail found her guilty of possession of that controlled substance. She pled not guilty. And the jail on appeal upheld that conviction. And perhaps most important, she served 35 days in the hole as a result of that uh, I guess we'd call it a conviction. I don't know that there's anything remotely approaching due process as we think of outside, uh, but whatever passes for due process inside the jail, she served a sanction for that. She served a sanction that the jail believes is appropriate. And the other thing is, and I'm again, constantly amazed uh, when I hear this, and sometimes prosecutors with due respect, judges, and probation officers somehow have this idea that we can tell someone, tell an addict to, we shake our finger in their face, we say, don't use. And we expect that suddenly everything will be wonderful and they don't use. I have yet to meet an addict who can simply say, I'm not gonna use anymore and not use. It does not work that way. It has never worked that way. But 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 even though an addict relapses, shouldn't there be consequences? I'm not saying there shouldn't be consequences, Your Honor. She served them. She served 35 days of them inside the Butler County Jail. And she served 35 days with essentially in isolation, with no human contact, what in with prison we'd call it solitary confinement. Um I don't know whether she possessed the fentanyl in the jail or not. The jail concluded she did. Uh, she served a sanction for that 35 days. I will also note in that same packet of items, uh, a completion from Mirror of her treatment dated October 13 of 2023. I have no, I have no um, difficulty uh, believing that Miss Fry is proud of her recovery and at the same time acknowledge that she may relapse. Those two are not incongruous. Um, and given the struggle she's had, what I don't see any point in or any, any service in is remanding her to the Department of Corrections for looks like 18 months as an underlying sentence. Will there be drugs inside the prison? Yes, there will. Um, will she have use of them there? Yes, she if she wants to. Um, in fact, they're probably easier to get inside the prison than they are outside the prison. Um, and I get that she has been at this now for some time. It's been extended, it looks like, for some time. Uh, but she has made progress at treatment as reflected in the mirrors. Uh, she has consistently denied in my office, as well as with Ms. Ashenfelder, that she used any sort of uh, fake pee or urine. The court did not so find that. The violation that the court is now finding is a violation that my client has served a significant sanction for already. And I want to ask that that sanction be considered in whatever sanction the court uh, imposes here, and that she not be simply remanded to custody. Thank you, Mr. Watts. Ms. Fry, do you have any statements that you wish to make in mitigation of punishment here? Uh, yes, sir. Um, I do this, do apologize for any disrespect at that time at the allegations at the Butler County Jail. Um, I was in addiction um, at that time when that had happened. Um, 
since then, I have went to inpatient treatment. I'm currently still in an intensive outpatient treatment. I have not used, I have not filled any UAs for Ms. Ashton Felter or for my treatment. They've all been coming back clean. Um, I have employment. I got my children in my life. Um, I'm, I'm working on getting my money saved up to pay my fines off. Um, I am taking use of the help that I am getting out of this program. Um, I've been successful staying clean. I'm doing, um, I have a sheet where I'm doing classes outside of here, NA, AA in my free time. Um, I'm trying to be a service and give back to others at this time. And I would just ask not to be sent to prison um, when I've been making such strides in my life. And I've, I'm very grateful for my recovery and the things that it is bringing. Um, as I, I was aware of this would only ever been my second probation violation. How many do you think you get, Ms. Fry? You were born none. to start with. None. none, Your Honor, none. And I'm very grateful for the first one that I, I was able to um, continue. I don't mean you were so disrespect. thankful you possessed fentanyl in the jail. At that time, your honor, I was not um, in the right mind. I was um, it was later on that I I did thank Miss Christie for that time at the jail and treatment because I was able to get where I'm at in my recovery. Very well, Miss Fry. Courts prepared to rule. The, the fentanyl possession violation in the jail was reported by the jail, acted upon by the jail administratively, and then eventually admitted to the officer. Uh, this, the court considers to be a very serious breach of the terms and conditions of probation in this case. Ms. Fry, even after the 42-day sanction that was imposed last time, and I think that was related to your failure to complete treatment, because that's been the focus of your probation all along, and the whole reason why you didn't go to prison on the border box case in the beginning was so that you could be rehabilitated and hopefully get free from drugs. Uh, the court considers this again, a very serious breach that you would in any way be involved with that dangerous drug of fentanyl after being sent for sanction time in the jail. Uh, it, it is about as serious a violation as you could have. With that said, the court does note certain things. Uh, number one, it does appear that you did successfully complete a treatment program. I hope that that means that you now can make better decisions regarding illegal drugs and substance abuse in general. It may mean that if the, if the treatment takes, if you take it seriously and follow up with appropriate aftercare, it can be a great positive step in your life. But again, this voluntary at a minimum possession of fentanyl, you must be held accountable for what you did. Ms. Fry, and quite frankly, this court is not concerned with what was done administratively. That is a housing decision within the facility during your sanction time. Rather, what this court will impose at this time is a 60-day jail sanction effective immediately. I'm going to order that Janie Fry be taken into custody to serve 60 days in the Butler County Jail. The court does not see at this point that incarceration in a correctional facility is either necessary or appropriate, but a significant jail sanction should result. That is the maximum amount of time which this court can impose as a probation sanction. That will be the order today. Uh, Janie Fry is to serve 60 consecutive days in the Butler County Jail. I don't think she's got any time on this arrest to credit. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Watts. Judge, I don't know how much time she might have served upon her arrest on this warrant to show cause. I, I just don't know. Well, I know she made bond. Um, I served two days, Your Honor. All right. Well, I'm going to ask the jail to deduct any time that uh, was already served on this warrant. Um, it issued in October, I believe. So whatever October jail time would be attributable to this case should be deducted from the 60. Then I'll reinstate her community corrections. Uh, quite frankly, I want to take an optimistic approach here. Uh, Ms. Ashenfelter, in your professional judgment, if you feel probation needs to be extended in the future, you may submit a request. But I'm going to leave the probation expiration date the same. What I really want to see, Ms. Fry, is that when you get out, that you can actually comply with probation conditions fully for a few months. 
and then perhaps you'll be in a position to be released on this case. That certainly would mean that you cannot have a positive test for any type of illegal substance. You must report as directed, do any follow up on your treatment after care, for example, or meetings that are necessary. Um, perhaps it won't be necessary to extend this case further. I do recall that your expiration date now is April 18 of 2024. All right, uh, there will be no additional bids assessments at this time. I, I don't see that Ms. Fry, given her incarcerated status for two months, will be in a financial position to pay additional amounts. So Mr. Sweeney, is there anything else we need to address currently? No, Your Honor. Mr. Watts, anything further that needs to be addressed at this time? No, Your Honor, thank you. Ms. Ashenfelter, do you need any further clarification from the court? No, Your Honor. Ms. Fry, you have an obligation within one business day of being released from jail to contact Christy Ashenfelter and arrange for uh, future reporting from there. Yes, Your Honor. All right, very well. well. Remand her into the custody of the sheriff's representatives until her custody can be transferred to the jail to serve the remaining balance of the 60-day sanction imposed today. There's nothing further. The Janie Fry matter will currently be in recess, and this meeting may.